It's so fun to see everybody arriving. Thank you for taking the time. We're excited to be able to provide you guys with some training and, you know, whatever information it is that you guys want to see. Uh, this series of webinars is for you. So if there's anything specific that that you think of that you say, oh, it would be great to have this, um, just send me an email or Tim or Rick and uh, we'll make it happen. Okay, Timo, whenever you're ready, we can go ahead and get started. Okay, perfect. Um, well, like Patricia said, we really thank you guys for coming in to our webinar series. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about uh, dashboards and uh, generic inquiries. And just caveat before we get started, I am running the preview version of 21R1. So it worked last night. <laughs> so we'll uh, cross our fingers and hope everything uh, continues that way today. Um, so you'll see I'm at the login screen. I'm gonna go ahead and get started and we're just gonna dive right in. And um, I'm gonna be about 35 or 40 minutes and then we'll leave some time at the end for, for questions and, and comments and anything like that, that that we might have about the demo. Um, so as you notice, we've come, we're into our main homepage as a user. Um, I'm gonna kind of point out some things that you may or may not know with, with Acumatica, but in your profile, you have the ability to control what your homepage view looks like. So if you go to my profile, and when that pulls up, you'll see down here at the home page, I have it set to a customer view dashboard. And that'll allow you to basically go in and you can filter it by the workspaces to dashboards. And you can you pick any dashboard that you want, or you can type in the search and it will bring up all the dashboards that you have available. So just kind of having that ability to set your, your default home page to a uh, view or a dashboard that you wanna see when you log in to Acumatica uh, can be a really helpful thing. And the way to get back to it is you just click on the, the logo. In this instance, I'm just clicking on the Acumatica in the top left corner, and that gets me back to my homepage. Uh, so the, the goal of today is we're gonna kind of walk you through a, a scenario. And one of the things that I wanna do is our output today is going to be a dashboard, uh, which we're going to call webinar sales orders and quotes. So this is what our goal is, is to create this output. It's pretty simple, but it's, you know, it's got a, a top 10 customer orders by amount uh, with some with some stop lighting on our um, coloring. And then I've also got some pie charts which show our bottom 10 customers by total dollars and our top 10 customers by total dollars. So that's gonna be kind of the goal of what we wanna to accomplish today. And we're gonna kind of go through the mechanics of what does it take to kind of get to this point. So just kind of diving in, one of the things I do wanna kind of point out, um, Acumatica has one of the best help uh, systems that I've ever seen in a middle market uh, ERP system, and it's quite useful. So. I'm gonna point you to a place that you may not, may or may not know about. If you go to the little help uh, icon at the top right, and you go down to the bottom, there's an Acumatica Educational Resources. And if you click on that, that's gonna take you to just a wealth of a whole bunch of uh, content, broken out by content sections, uh, but it's gonna give you a lot of information at your fingertips. And what I wanna do is point out what is going to be useful for you if you're trying to do the things that we're doing today is coming down into this implementation consultant uh, section and going to report tools. So when you click on that, it's going to take you to another section of the reports, but it's going to show you how to manage dashboards. And then dashboards are built on our generic inquiry tool. So these are the two sections that we're really going to be focusing in today on the webinar. So dashboards and the, the backend uh, database side of it, which would be the generic inquiry that's going to feed the data to our dashboard. 
but these are really helpful and it gives you a lot of information of, you know, how do you set a, a dashboards up? What is the layout? You know, how do you actually create a dashboard? So it, it walks you right through the steps of the things that you're going to need to do to, to do that. And we're going to walk through that today, but I just wanted to point out that uh, this area in the uh, resource, uh, the educational resources section uh, is super uh, good resource for you. Highly recommend, uh, you know, spending some time in there because uh, there's really good uh, walkthroughs on how to do things. And then we'll, I'll show you a few things as we kind of get through the, the demo that I've pulled out and uh, we'll use as kind of a guide or kind of um, cheat sheets for you as you kind of start building your uh, dashboards and, and inquiries. So let's just jump right in. So to create a, um, a dashboard, we have to first have the security to be able to do that. So I'm just gonna point out if you go into your user security, and again, everybody may not have access to this. So you'll have to work with your system administrator to, to make sure you have the ability uh, to do what I'm gonna show you. Um, and then if you go into your login, and in this case, I'm logging in as the administrator. So I kind of have God rights in the system. And a couple of roles that you're gonna want to make sure you have as part of um, somebody who's going to be doing dashboards or inquiries. Um, there's really three that come to mind. The BI, which is our access to business intelligence views. Um, the customizer, and I'll point out why that's important in, in a few minutes. And then the dashboard designer. So before I can even get into the dashboard page and, and, and actually click on the design button to enter in and edit the dashboard, I have to have that level of access. So that's kind of the first thing. So having the, the correct uh, security access to give me the ability to go in and uh, create these dashboards. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually, we're gonna start in that dashboard and I'm just gonna show you a few things. So um, you'll have this design button once you have that dashboard designer. And when you click on it, you'll see it puts the dashboard widgets into an edit mode. And you'll see when I click on the little pencil, it's gonna bring up the, the widget properties for that dashboard. And it's gonna show me the inquiry screen that is this dashboard is being built off of. Uh, in our instance, we're gonna um, create the same one. So um, we're just gonna walk through that process. But if I wanted to go into that one, um, I need to go into my generic inquiry and I'm just going to duplicate my tabs here. So I have my dashboard on one tab and then I can come over and go to my favorites and go to my generic inquiry page. And we're going to create that, uh, that dashboard, but I'm going to pull it up first just to show you what, what it looks like and kind of where we're going to end up when we're done today. So the generic inquiry is, is, like I said, it's the baseline for your dashboards. Um, it's a busy screen, but it's pretty easy to deconstruct. So the inquiry title is just the name of the inquiry so that I can you know, get back to it and edit it at a later date. Um, no spaces in the inquiry title. Uh, the sitemap title, so if I have make visible on the UI, then the sitemap title is going to be what is displayed on my menu. So in this instance, I have sales orders and quotes. We're going to preface that with a webinar, webinar sales orders and quotes when we create ours. And then the workspace. So the workspace is the module that I'm going to, I want to make it visible in. So if I go to sales orders, I want to pick my sales order workspace. And then within the workspace, I'll pick sales order. And then within that, when I select sales orders, it now gives me some additional uh, uh, selections from a category. So these are the different areas in the menu that I can place this uh, inquiry. So in, in our instance, we're gonna want to set it to inquiries. 
And then that will actually, by selecting Make Visible on UI, it opens up these two fields. I'm now going to deploy this inquiry screen to my sales order uh, module in the cat uh, inquiries category. And it's gonna put that menu in there. Now, security comes into play here in that I'm doing it for me. So when I create and deploy this and I save this, it's going to add that when I saved it to that sales order screen. So if I come back over to this screen, go to sales orders uh, and come over to inquiries, um, it's, it's not showing up. And that's because I haven't put any security around it in that sense. It's there, so I have to go to the edit menu and I can then add a menu item. And if I start typing sales orders and quotes, and of course it's not gonna, it's already there somewhere. Hang on one second. Uh, let's see, did I not save it? It was there, Tim. Was it there? I just yep. didn't see it. There right there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> kind of monitor blind there. Um, so it's, it's right there. So that's going to now show up on the, uh, the menu. One of the things that um, a lot of people don't know is when you're in the menu editing, I can actually now drag this around and reorder where that menu item is going to land on my uh, menu page. So if I actually wanted it at the top, I just drag it up to the top and, and it will reorder that to there. I could actually drive it over here to process or forms. Not sure why you would want to do that in this instance, but you have the ability to do it. So when I hit exit, now that is gonna become part of that, uh, that menu set. So it's, it's pretty easy to do that deployment by doing it, make the visibility on the UI. Um, so in that regards, I'm the only one that's going to be able to see that unless I put a access role around that report or add that report to an existing access role so that those that are associated with that role would then have rights to that report. Um, so that kind of takes care of kind of this left section of the, the generic inquiry, but we also have some additional selection boxes here. So show, show deleted records. So this is a fairly new feature that Acumatica has added where if you go in and, and delete a record or void something out, uh, most times it's just changing the status of that record. It's not physically removing that record from the transaction set. And this so, show deleted records will allow you to see those in the output of your query. Um, and then we have a, a couple others here, uh, the exposed via OData. So Acumatica was one of the first uh, ERP applications to actually work with Microsoft to embed their OData exchange into their in inquiry tool to where if I click this, I can now export my Acumatica data to outside business intelligence tools. So think of Microsoft Power BI, um, Tableau, uh, Domo, uh, click view, any of the ones that are out there that, that uh, can read a no data feed, it's super easy to do that. And at the end, if we have a few minutes, I'll, I'll show that from this example. And then we can also, uh, just with a click of a checkbox, we can now deploy this uh, inquiry to our mobile applications. Um, so being able to just click a button, hit save, and now it's the, kind of that code-free deployment. Uh, I also have the ability to kind of order, you know, do I pre-filter pre um, how many rows I'm going to get back? If, I'm, if I've got a large query, this, this may be a good thing. You may want to limit to like the first 500 records so you're not uh, spending a lot of time. You can always then override that when you're actually viewing the inquiry. And I can do records per page, um, export the top number of records. And then I can attach notes to specific, uh, the tables there. And I can also change the parameters uh, to be in a multi-column uh, phase. And parameters, think of those as this kind of top header area where I can do a pre-filter on my data. 
So that kind of gives us a view of what the top of the generic inquiry uh, screen is. And then now we get into kind of how do we create one? And basically, if you've ever used Microsoft Access or any kind of relational database, it works the same way. So I'm going to uh, add my tables. Uh, they're called tables here, but in the, the help documents, it may be referred to as data access classes as well. So kind of interchangeable tables or data access classes. But this is the table that resides in the SQL database. And I can add you know, a bunch of tables, but then what I have to do is I have to make sure I can interconnect those tables on a relation uh, between key fields. So in this instance, my parent table is the uh, sales order, order, and I'm tying that to a, the customer table. And then on that, I'm linking the customer ID field to the B account field in my customer table. So that, you know, now I'm, I'm, I've linked those two tables together via uh, adding these two tables here and creating a relationship. So in 2020, R1 and later, Acumatica made it a lot easier, or maybe R2, uh, that they made it a lot easier. So all I have to do is hit this add related table. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna pop up and I'm highlighted on customer. So that's, I'm showing that to be my parent table. So it is now showing every table that I could possibly connect to, to that customer table because there is a key field um, linking uh, that I could use there. So if I wanted to add, you know, the customer class table, I can select that table and you'll see here there's this relation is blank right here. When I hit select related table, it's actually gonna populate the, the relationship of what is now going to be joined between customer and customer class. And I'm gonna join that on customer class ID to customer class ID from the customer and customer class. So Acumatic has kind of made it super easy to kind of build reports uh, now by you know showing you the tables that a table can link to and then creating those relationships for you. And some tables, it, you, you could have multiple layers of relations that you have to set for that. And Acumatica is going to give those to you. And if it was expanded here where there were multiple relations uh, that needed to be joined, you could actually expand that field out and see them. I'm not gonna do that to, to this one just so that we can keep this uh, pretty simple, but that's the way you would wanna do that. One of the other ways that it, this is where that customizer role comes in, in in security is if I go into my sales order screen, cause that's really where I'm building this report from. And I just pick any sales order that's out there. Um, you know, as a report designer, I, I know on my field visibly what I want to pull to my report, but I don't know where the database piece of it comes in. So that customizer role gives you now this customization button. And within that, you have a, a tool in there called inspect element. Now, word of caution, the customizer role is not something you wanna hand out to everybody in your organization. It is something you want to have a pretty tight lockdown control on, but those who are more technical and can and are going to be your report writers, uh, you may want to give them this role. So if I click that inspect element, um, you'll see it turned my cursor into a question mark. And what that allows me to do is now I can hover over the fields in my um, in my form and get the data of where that, um, that field is in the database. So if I click on my sales order number, again, like I said, you'll see this kind of interchangeable. So think data class equals table on the generic inquiry. You'll see that my table here is the SO order table and my data field is the order NBR field. So pretty quickly, I'm able to now kind of sketch out the fields that I could potentially want to move to a report that I'm building. Um, in this instance, we are using uh, the order number in our output 
of our generic inquiry. So if you come over here, you'll see I have SO order. Order NBR is my second field on that. But that's how you can go quickly kind of determine you know, what fields are in use. Now, let me pull one that's open uh, so that I can show you how to get uh, various statuses. So if I come down to an, one that's open that has a status and I go to that inspect element again and I hover over that open field, then that is a pull down that has some um, workflow logic behind it. And you'll see it's the SO order, it's the status field, but now I get this drop down values component. And when I click on that, then it's going to show me in my database, open the value in that field is going to be in. So this is a really uh, nice way to kind of, if you're pre filtering or you need to filter down to a specific level on a report being able to see what the values are that make up the actual database records. So N equals open, and then you know completed is C, um, L is canceled, and I is invoiced. And we're gonna use those as we kind of go through the, the rest of the demo here. But a nice way to kind of peek into the back end to see uh, what's available uh, at a record and field level in the database. Um, and that kind of works throughout the whole system. Um, you know, just being able to use that inspect element. So now we'll come back over to our generic inquiry. So we've gone through the tables, we've gone through the relations. Um, so now I, you know, we may want to add some parameters on this report. And again, parameters would be kind of the top header section where I may want to do some some filtering on the data set um, that I'm going to be outputting. And in this instance, I've got uh, five of them, but only three of them are going to be used because, um, you know, I've added a date just so that we can show a date control on there as part of this demo. But really, when you're feeding generic or generic inquiries to a dashboard, you, you want to do the filtering side um, on the output side of the inquiry, not the, the design set of the, the query. So in this instance, I was, I was taking off the, the date ranges so that we can kind of filter down and see the data in a more holistic way. But in this instance, um, these are the, the name column is just the name that you want to um, use for the parameters, because we may use the parameters in our conditions, or we will. Um, and then the schema is, what is that type or where is it coming from? So in order type, uh, let me just run this. Well, actually, let me duplicate it and then we'll run it and I'll show you the output. So we'll run this and we'll see the output of what, what does it look like when we actually run it? So you'll see I have my order type, I have a customer, and I have include closed orders. So these are the three of the five parameters that I have uh, loaded uh, and active for this uh, inquiry. Uh, what I've done is I've done a kind of pre-filter. So when I include uh, closed orders, you'll see everything is in there completed, open, invoiced, canceled. But then I could also do a pre uh, another pre-filter to just show maybe quotes or just show sales orders. Or I wanna show sales orders by a specific customer. Um, and I don't wanna include completed. So you'll see my data set just drops off for that customer because I'm not including those uh, completed records. So you can see you have a lot of control that you can use uh, when using these parameters. So how does that work? Um, so when I'm back on this parameter field, I'm going to establish my parameters. So in that order type, I'm actually creating a combination box, a pull down list of values. So when I'm there, I select combo box and I select the combo box values. And when I go in there, I'm able to add the value that I want to filter on. In this instance, I know the quote order type is QT. 
and the sales order order type is SO. So I just manually typed those in uh, to create that kind of list. If I wanted to add, you know, a, a credit memo or a return for credit in this list, I could do that, but I would have to know what that value is. So once I have that, I have now a list of values that can be pulled from that order type uh, field. And then I'm going to give it a display name. So what is the name that's going to be shown on the actual inquiry? And then in this instance, because I'm hard coding to a drop down combo box that I'm controlling, I'm not going to pull it from schema. So if I'm pulling from schema, I'm actually like in the customer ID field, I'm my customer here, I'm going to pull into my so order dot customer ID. So I found that using the inspect element. And then the display name, I just want it to be customer. But now when I'm in there, it's going to give me that magnifying glass. And I want to pull my values from my database for that customer ID. So when I do that, I just click the from schema. And that's going to then make that connection for me uh, to the database to be able to pull that uh, in from a list. Um, and then I also wanted to include the closed orders in this example. And in this instance, it's a yes, no, on, off checkbox. And my display name is include, include closed orders. And I'm going to use this in my conditions to, to specify the closed order statuses that I want to pull in. Um, in this instance, I'm going to uh, have it default as checked. So one or zero for checkbox one being on, zero being off. And then I also added two additional fields here that aren't active. One is the SO order order date. Well, they're both the order date, but one's the from date and one's the to date. So I can now add a range of dates for these orders if I wanted to. And I just wanted to show this because in the default value, I'm pulling from the schema, but I get these calendar controls that allow me to do you know, the, the month start value. So it's gonna have the uh, three one date, and then it's gonna have the month in, which would be 331. So those are gonna be my default values that I can pre-populate with this, um, with this, um, this parameter. I'm gonna turn them on just so that you can see what happens when we turn them on. Um, and then I'm gonna close this one. I'm gonna hit view inquiry. And when I do that, you'll see now I get the from and to date added to my inquiry. And it's now filtering down to between those, uh, those, those ranges um, in that query. So that would be how you would add that in. I want the raw data to come through. So we're going to leave that open and then be able to consume at a higher level. And then I can filter. Uh, from within my output or filter within my dashboard. And then the conditions tab. So this is where I'm now going to consume my parameters. So you'll see I've got my customer parameter, I've got my order type parameter, my from and to, and then I also have my include closed orders um, as well. So let's kind of break this down a little bit. So in the first two couple here, what I'm doing is I'm filtering where the customer ID is going to be equal to the customer. So let's run this one again. So when I make a selection and that's populated, that's what that first row is going to evaluate. The second row is just going to let me allow an empty box to be there. And what that does is it just says, pull all rows at that, at that point. So I'm allowing my customer to be empty. Um, you know, it can, I'm either gonna have a selection or it's empty. And then the same goes for the next couple where I have the order type. Um, I'm using the, the filter here in that it is gonna, uh, filter down to the SO or quote, because I'm hard filtering that, but I'm allowing a selection there. 
in that parameter. So in my pull down here, that's my selection. And then I'm also hard coding it. So I only want those two to be available. So I'm now saying in the next couple, the order type is going to be equal to SO or the order type is going to be equal to uh, QT. And then this is adding my date range. So is greater than or equal to the from and is less than or equal to the two, or I'm allowing empty. And then the last three, I'm, I'm filtering where the status does not equal um, uh, anything else. But what that's going to do is it's going to include, this is an inclusion. If this is one, then I want to include the, the completed, the canceled, and the invoiced. And remember back when we did the drop down values on the status, C was completed, L was canceled, and I was invoiced. So I want to include those in my uh, include closed orders in this output. I'm not doing any uh, grouping. So we, we are able to do summaries within inquiries now. And if I group on different fields, just like you would in uh, pivot tables or something like that, uh, I can do aggregate summaries on my result grid from that. And then in my sort order, I'm going to use my order total, the currency order total in descending order to give me all of the, the rows in uh, top to bottom, highest to lowest. And then the result grid is actually the meat of the report. So this is where you're actually building and dropping the fields into the inquiry. In this instance, the object is going to be that table or data access class. So I have SO order and I have customer. And from the first line, the order, I'm pulling the order type. So these are all the fields within the SO order table. And then same for order number, status, and then the account name, I'm actually pulling from the customer record. So these are the fields that I have available for the customer record. One thing that's uh, kind of neat, and I'll take a pause here just for a quick second. I'm going to duplicate this and show you a little trick on how to learn the back end real easy. I'm going to create a new um, inquiry just called test one. I'm not going to make it visible. Well, I will make it visible here, but we'll just put it there. Hit save. And then I'm going to add that AR customer table. to my table set, I'm going to save that. And then I'm just going to jump right over to the result grid. And I'm going to add one row. And I'm going to select customer. And then in the data field, you'll see all fields. So I want to see every field in my output uh, for the customer table. I just drop the all fields in. And when I hit save, it's going to expand and add every field to my result grid. So this is a real quick way of uh, trying to see everything that's in a table and then see what data is in there. So if I save that and if I just go view inquiry, it's going to open up a new tab. And, and now it's going to roll in every field, every record that's coming from that, that uh, customer table. So this is a real quick way to kind of learn your data from the back end and see everything that's in there and get an idea of you know, what might I want to use for a, another report. So that's a quick way to do that. Um, so kind of going back to our inquiry that we're on, we'll just finish this one out. Schema field. So if you have a, a value um, uh, field or a format field that you want to bring a format into, you'll want to use the schema field. So this will actually format it to whatever the, um, the um, form output is in that instance. Um, in this instance, I'm just going to leave it blank. Uh, it's just going to be a, um, a, a numbered field. And then I also have control in points how wide a field is, so the minimum width of a field. So in this instance, 
The status is always going to be 90 points. The account name is going to be 200 points and the curry ID is going to be 90. And then I've got a couple of uh, additional fields. So I can turn visibility on and I can make them active or inactive. So this, this goes to like where I was dropping all the fields in from the customer table. I may just kind of go through and start whacking out uh, various fields that I don't want to see in there because either there's null values or it just doesn't make sense. And I can just deactivate them, but I can also make them not visible. Um, and that's kind of what you would use that uh, for in that instance. But I have two, uh, a row style at the top, and I have a style at the individual field level. So what do those do? So I'm going to cheat a little bit, and I'm going to pull up my notes here that I created for this, um, this uh, webinar. And you'll see the row style, that is going to control when I do an output. I can put a conditional format at the row level so the whole row will change a color. Um, from the help file, I pulled out the standard um, convention for row style and for field style. So if I wanted to, in our instance here, I want to make any order that's greater than or equal to $100,000 good. Well, what is good? Well, good is going to be this green color with the green, light green background with a dark green text. And I want all my orders that are less than 100,000 to be bad. In this instance, it's going to be the light red with the dark red text. And then at the row style or the field style, what I'm going to do is if the order type is SO for sales order, I want it to be a light purple. And if the order type is quote, I want it to be light orange. And then if I happen to have any other order type in there, then it's gonna be the default. And the default is the normal white layer. Um, so just wanted to kind of point that out. This, this uh, field is in, if you search in the resource guide, um, search for formulas and you will find the output of, of that color scheme. Now it shows it in the table with a space between them, but when you actually build your, your format, you need to not put a space in there. So just a little tip and trick there. So at the row level, what I've done is I've copied that, that formula into the row level. So it's the same one we saw in the document there. And Always good practice is to hit validate. Another way to see the color piece is if I go there and go to styles, you'll see I have them already laid out there in the styles section. I also have my fields labeled here in the field section. So I'm seeing every field that I have from my customer and my sales order table. And then I can just double click on them and they'll drop them into the, to the formula box down here. And then it's always good to hit the validate, make sure that validation passes. Once I do that, then I know my, uh, usually my, my formula is good. And then I did the same thing for the row style on my order type. So if it's SO, it's going to be purple. If it's QT, it's going to be orange. And then I get the little pencil on the style and I have that same formula there. Um, I cheated a bit because I just copied and pasted, but um, being able to kind of build that out to get that kind of color scheming that you want. And you can see the output, what it does is, you know, SOs are going to have that light purple, but my row based on my value is going to be on, uh, you know, green or red. So let's kind of go scroll down and see if we get down into anything less than 100,000 here. And then that should start showing up in red. You got a few pages here, getting close. There we go. So that quick, you can kind of quickly mark your reports visually to give you that visual feedback. Green is good. Red is, hey, I need to take a look at it. And then I can also at the column or field level, I can do color grading uh, or what we call stop lighting uh, as well. 
I'm not going to talk about entry point because entry point starts getting into some uh, some kind of higher functioning. We may do this in a later webinar where I'm able to do mass updates. I can do mass record deletions. Um, I can create new records from a query. So if I wanted to, to populate from a generic inquiry to another section in the, the database, I can do that. But this is a, a section that you really have to know what you're doing or you can quickly mess some, some things up. The last thing I wanted to, to show, well, a couple things. So even in my generic inquiry, Acumatic is now pulling in this side panel concept. So, you know, I was having to hit view inquiry here to get the preview. Well, they made it even easier. So if I just open up my side panel within my generic inquiry editor, I now get a preview of my output on the report. So that's a real uh, nice way to, to kind of see what you're doing. And I can make a change and then come over here and hit the refresh button and I'll get the, the updated uh, the view there. The other thing is, is, well, I want to use that side panel on my output. So in my navigation, what I need to do is I need to pull in my sales order screen because what I want to do is when I'm on here, I want to show when I'm on a specific record, I want to show that sales order. So 4636, if I'm on that record, I want to show that record in my sales order screen but on the same display. So I can go down to my red one. That's the one I need to look at, highlight it, and it's gonna change it to 4643. And now I can see what makes up my summary data in detail uh, over here on the, the, the right-hand side. And how that gets created is super easy. Um, I pull in my sales order table or what I want to link it to. Now I have to have a field that I can link to from my inquiry to the form. That's key. Uh, but in this instance, I'm creating my uh, sales order target and I want that to be a side panel. I could also do a pop-up window or in the same tab or a new tab. But in this instance, I want that to be in the side panel. And then I can just pick whatever icon you want out of the 400 and something that they have there. And then I select the field from my inquiry that I want to, uh, to use, which I'm using the order number because I know order number is going to get me the link that I need uh, in my sales order order number table. So that's, that's it. That's all you have to do to create that side panel view that now lets you show on the left my summary data from the inquiry and then show the actual sales order form on the right hand side. So that kind of walks us through, you know, what we wanted to accomplish today from the generic inquiry side, but then how do we consume that on a dashboard? And I've got 15 minutes, so I'm going to go a little bit quick, but the dashboard piece, the, the, the meat was in the inquiry. You got to get the inquiry right. Uh, the dashboards are super easy to do. So what I want to do is I want to go to my dashboard editor and I'm going to create a new one called webinars. And in this instance, I'm going to set it to the administrator just in my demo. And as the designer of the dashboard page, you want to, it's a global setting. Do you want to allow that user to be able to personalize or not personalize that dashboard? Uh, in this instance, we'll, we'll let them uh, do that. And then I wanna make that uh, visible on the, um, uh, on the UI, but I wanna point it to my dashboards. Hey Tim, do you remember which version the site paneling uh became available it's it's been there since 2019 i believe yeah i thought so and then i'm just going to put them into my uh well we'll do sales orders we'll just do dashboards dashboards so it's going to create 
that in my dashboard panel now to where I have a new uh, dashboard uh, menu selection here with my webinar sales orders and quotes. And if I click on that, it's gonna be empty. Now I also have the ability to, at a global level, expose that dashboard to my mobile application. So I'm gonna just show real quick. I'm gonna pull my mobile application up. I'm gonna log in real quick. I'm just logging in using the, the facial ID of the phone. I'm just gonna show you that right now at the very bottom of my icon set, I don't have my webinar um, sales orders and quotes down here. You can see it doesn't exist yet. Um, so I'm gonna click on that and hit save. And just by doing that, it's going to add it to my, uh, my mobile app once we get everything uh, completed. So a couple of ways now from the designer side, now I can just click view and that's gonna jump me over as if I went over here and hit click. So if I just hit view, it's gonna take me to that blank page now. And really there's nothing here. I'm not showing anything. So I have to go into that designer editor. And in this instance, I want a multi-column. I want a two-column set, which it actually lets you do more, but I wanna have this kind of multi-column side-by-side uh, -side view. And you'll see it, it now adds uh, multiple widget panels there. In this instance, I could come in here and we're going to create that uh, data table that we have there. I'm going to hit data table and I'm going to hit next. But you'll see these are the things that you have available to you. I can do charts. I can do data tables. I could actually embed my company website into a dashboard uh, to do, you know, a lot of people do that for HR stuff, company information, um, just whatever. I can embed a web page to there. The header is just going to be a header section. Um, KPIs, if, you've, if you remember on the homepage, we have the little tiles, the little smaller tiles with numbers in them. Those are gonna be my KPI tiles. I can actually link uh, to a different workspace item or form. Uh, I can now add pivot tables. So if you're doing pivot tables from the generic inquiry, I can now bring those forward to a dashboard. That's, that becomes really powerful because I can have multiple widgets of pivot tables and really kind of flesh out a really nice report. Um, we talked about the Power BI, so embedded. So I have the ability to embed natively Power BI tiles using OData. Uh, trend card KPIs, so if I need to show an upward trend or downward trend, I can do that. Or if I wanna bring a help page to, to a dashboard, a specific custom made dashboard, I can do that. I'm gonna select the data table and hit uh, next. And then we're gonna call this, so uh, we're gonna select our webinar and I'm gonna pick that sales order, orders and quotes. And then you'll see, here's my parameters that I have in there. And really the only one that I wanna kind of leave there checked is that include closed orders. So it's gonna bring in every order type, every customer and every closed completed, canceled or invoiced uh, uh, order. And then I could do filtering. Uh, so this is a section where if you do filtering from within the view output of your generic inquiry, you can name those as tabs on your inquiry. And then I can consume those uh, here in a dashboard. In this instance, I just wanna get all records and I wanna, this is something new that Acumatic had in 2020, where I can now, um, it will auto refresh the page without me hitting refresh. It'll refresh the individual uh, widgets on the dashboard. So I can have it on page load do that or every five minutes, or maybe I only wanna do it once a week. But these are the, the time fences that you have now. Uh, I wanna automatically adjust the height on this. And I only want to pull the top 10 records in this. 
And, and then in my column settings, I only want my customer name and the order total. So I want to move the, the rest of these off my report. So I'm going to just have my customer name and order total. And I'm going to hit OK. And then I'm going to caption this as webinar. And I'm going to hit finish. And then if I did it right, I'm going to get I'm going to get my list of values. And then I can kind of make that a little bit wider. Or I can make it a little narrower. In this version, they've now allowed you, and we'll show that here in just a second, where I can now copy these widgets to additional panes, which that's, if you see how I'm gonna do that in this next instance. So I'm gonna add those pie charts. So I'm gonna hit next. I'm gonna pick that sales orders and inquiries. And then in this instance, I'm pulling all the records, but uh, what I want to do is I want to pull in the um, chart settings here to where, whoops, hang on, I gotta get the right one. Chart helps to get the right one. So we're gonna pull that sales orders and quotes again. And I'm going to pull all records. And I'm going to caption it as webinar. Oops. Well, of course, Murphy's Law is going to hit me here. For some reason, it's not letting me add the chart control. So we're going to punt on this one. We're going to go back to our dashboard and go back to our data views and go into our webinar here to let you see how I created these. <laughs> go into design. So how did I create these? So I don't know why the data control wasn't pulling up for that. But in this instance, I'm pulling the, uh, in the configure button, I'm selecting my donut here and I'm, I've created a legend called um, customer name and I'm doing ascending. So I wanna get my lowest customer, top 10 customers. So I'm fixing that to my maximum number to be shown is 10. And then I'm going to get the bottom of the barrel for my customers. And then I'm summing on the order total field. And then I'm selecting a number format and summarizing that. And then conversely, what I did is I just hit the copy button here. And then I pasted it from that clipboard to this other tile on the right. And then I just edit it in my config. I want to use everything else as the same. And then I want to do descending. So I want to get my top 10 customers. And then I just relabel that top 10 and hit finish. So now I have two of them that look that way. But um, that's how quick I was able to, to replicate those two. And that's in 2020 R1. I don't believe that is available in uh, the previous releases. So. Once I'm done, you know, I could move this one over here. Uh, make it bigger. And hit my design again. And then that's going to take me out of the editor mode and put me into the view. So in this instance, I can see you know, what the percentage of the pie is for that customer being the bottom 10. 
And then I also have a legend where I can see the lowest to the top 10 on the bottom side, and then the same for the top down as far as my aggregate customers. So that's what I wanted to show today. Hopefully you got some information out of it. We've got a few minutes for questions, so I don't know, um, Patricia, how you wanted to tie this off, but. Um, so I just um, send a poll. If you guys can quickly tell us whether this was useful or not, because we want to give you more information, but it has to be what you guys need to see. So uh, any suggestions, any topics that you guys think would be useful, just please send it our way to any of us. Um, if you have any questions, um, let's see. If you have any questions, if you can just type them up. So and, Patricia, uh, one of the questions was, will the recording be made available? Yes. We will put it on our website and I will ask our marketing team to send it to everybody who attended the, the, the meeting. And I will actually the give them my script for this. So you'll have uh, that and they can format it and send it out as well as part of the, the email. Perfect. Um, well, I think we're out of time. Um, yeah, if you could just answer the poll and let us know other topics. And again, he focused on sales orders, but if you don't do sales orders, uh, you can do it on payroll, you can do it on AR, on AP, on whatever it is that's important to you. So, that, you know, these are great, great reporting tools. So Patricia, one, another question came in and it was, you know, they were trying to play along with me and they didn't have access to a lot of this. So that, again, that customizer role is one you want to be careful. So that's going to be dictated by your business as to how, how they want that to be distributed. Uh, the, the, the dashboard designer as well. It's, it's less intrusive into the system, but that customizer role can be, you can, you can mess some things up pretty quick if you don't know what you're doing. So um, just kind of be very careful with that. Does the generic inquiry create automatically export all rows when exported to Excel? I believe it does. If you don't, um, if you don't do that preconditioning uh, in the generic inquiry, so if you're on the generic inquiry, if so, because I know there are some Acumatica inquiries where they are um, they are controlling how many records can be downloaded to Excel. I think uh, on some I've seen it's like a thousand rows. But it will pop up a message and say, do you want to override that and download everything? So the answer is, it may give you a warning, uh, but it will let you do an override, I believe. OK, here's another question. After a viewing query, there is an option to filter. And if it has a shared checkbox, Great question. So I got time so I can hang out. Okay. <laughs> um, so let me open that one back up. And I'll show you what that you, know, you just, you know, sometimes you just an hour isn't quite enough to get through everything. So if I hit view inquiry here, I'm getting my output of the inquiry. And then you're talking about the filter settings here. There is a default and a shared button. So what, what this means is if I don't have shared checked here, then any of the tabs that I create, so let's just filter one down. Let's filter it by um, status equals open. And I'm gonna save that and I'm gonna give it a name called open. And what that's gonna do is it's actually gonna put a tab up here on my filter. And you'll see it opened up the default and it opened up the shared checkboxes. If I don't check shared and I hit apply, it's just gonna be for me. I'm the only one who's gonna be able to see this. Uh, nobody else in the company. 
Uh, if I hit shared and I hit apply, now that opened up to anyone in the company that has access via security to this inquiry screen. And that's where that kind of wrapping your security roles around or adding reports and inquiries to your security roles that makes sense to do because that that shared piece is a is a it's a global setting it's on or off so if i have this checked and users have this report as part of their security then they are going to now see that uh, that tab on their screen and they won't have any control um, at that point it'll be for everybody See, next question. I've noticed sometimes when Acumatic allows you to join tables, uh, it works. However, it really bogs it down and is very slow to load. Is there a general max number of tables you should join? So I think this is where um, actually in, in these newer versions where they're actually adding the, um, uh, the ability to um, do this related table and build the joins for you they're gonna be more optimized. So sometimes you can do a, a join that's incorrect or you don't have all the joins that you need. And I really think the, the way Acumatic has approached this by doing this ad related table and then doing the joins kind of for you um, in the best practice way, um, your reports are gonna run more optimally. So hopefully those get better but happy to, you know, if, if you've got some specifics, uh, send an email to support at PC Bennett and, and we'll, we'll be happy to uh, take a peek at it. Let's see, I did the same to share it with my company, I actually created the same tab for other generic inquiry as well. Is that an issue? It should only be in the uh, inquiry that you're on. So if, if it's just kind of globally adding uh, a tab to every other inquiry, then yeah, we, we would want to look at that. <laughs> I'm assuming that that isn't available in 2019 or two. Which, what is that Patricia? Uh, it's a question. but I don't know what. The sharing, the sharing on the filter after you run a report is available in, I believe, all the way back to 2018. So adding these tabs, these filter tabs. Oh those yeah, have, that's- Those have been there for a while, if that's the question. The ad related table is available in 2019 R2. I have to get back to you on that one. I, I believe it was in 2020, R2 was when that came in. Is there a master list of all data sets available? There is not a published schema, unfortunately. And this goes back to where, you know, kind of creating those individual inquiries by the custom, the, the tables or the DAX. Um, to kind of see what data is in there. Uh, that, that's a way around that. But Acumatica has not published a data schema as of yet. We've been asking for 10 years or yeah, 11 years. Been asking for a while. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Hey, I Any wanted to mention One more. Uh, how do you activate the site panel? I am not seeing it on 2019 or two. Okay. I, it definitely is available in 2019 or two. Yeah. Again, that would be one, you know, shoot me an email at timo at pcbennett.com and I can take a peek at that for you. One other option, you can go to help.acumatica.com and that will pull up the different versions that are available. You can click on your, the 2019 or two version and, and uh, search for that and see if it comes up that way as well help.acumatica.com. Uh, one one other thing more I was... tool is the community. I don't, yep. you know, there's now a, a community for Acumatica. It's made out of partners, customers, and Acumatica employees. You can ask anything you want there. And, uh, and 
you know, people are always there commenting and helping other people. So, yeah. Yeah. One other thing I was going to mention before we um, close, close off here is the, uh, for the upcoming events, you can now go to pcbennett.com uh, events and um, take a look at all the upcoming events on a monthly basis um, that we've got set up. You can register for those events. Um, and then we've also on the resources tab um, is where we'll resources. be putting the, the uh, videos, correct? Yeah. Very good. Thank you so much. Um, and again, anything that we can do, let us know. Thank you for participating, and we'll see you next month. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.